Jason Brady, CEO of Thornburg Investment Management. Jason has $49 billion in assets under management. And Jason, what, what is your allocation right now to, to stocks, given this bumpy ride we've been on? Sure, actually. I think there's a lot of quality stocks out there, not just in the U.S., but globally, which are underowned. So if you look at, obviously, the driver in 2021 was companies that weren't increasing their earnings, companies that increased their earnings actually underperformed. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there in a number of different sectors. As an example, one would be financials, which you mentioned earlier. You don't think they've, uh, they've already seen such a hot start to the, to the year? I, I, Karen Feinerman on, on Fast Money yesterday said, whenever they rally into earnings, they always sell off afterwards because the expectations are so high. That, that's obviously a short-term trade idea. But what, but what do you make of the fact that they've already had such strong performance so far this year? Sure. So I think that's a sector, whether it's uh, banks like J.P. Morgan or exchanges like, the, like CME, obviously a, a maybe less digital analog to Coinbase, as you were talking about earlier, those are both names that benefit from rising rates. And frankly, what we're seeing in a lot of investors' portfolios and a lot of client concerns is names that are being hurt by rising rates. So if you can have a balanced portfolio and take the other side of that, there's huge benefit to a lot of investors in those kinds of names. Mike, just pivoting back to today's uh, action and, and, and looking at where we ended up, obviously higher for the three major averages. As, uh, uh, as Josh already pointed out, the Russell, though, didn't perform. Interesting that under the surface, ARK uh, funds uh, rolled over in terms of their recent bounce back yeah. kind of sooner than the rest of the market. Yeah, I mean, th that was part of the group that I said, you know, some of the pressure was relieved because of these extreme moves over the prior two days. A lot of the stocks in, uh, in the ARK portfolios are up 10 percent. So violent bounces that come in bearish, uh, bearish patterns. And that's kind of uh, the story right there. And, you know, small caps uh, were telling a similar story, as Josh was saying, too. Small cap growth in general was not really where it was at today. The top two contributors to the upside uh, in the S&P were Tesla and Microsoft by a lot. So this was not the day uh, for ARC to make any headway. It's certainly uh, kind of guilty until proven innocent on those types of stocks right now. Josh, how are you reading that, that small cap underperformance? Because in, in one sense, a lot of people think this is the year for value uh, investors and cyclical investors. And, and if that's the case, shouldn't small caps be doing better? Not necessarily, Sarah. I understand that what, what you're saying, because when you look at the makeup of the small cap index, um, you, tend to have, you tend to have a lot of the companies be in the sectors that seem to be in favor this year, right? Like industrials um, and, and certainly financials and some energy. But it's, it's not enough. What's really going on here is that everybody is super leveraged. A lot of people are caught off sides with what seems to be working right now. Every manager has gotten the memo. It's about the old economy. It's about quality. It's about cash flows. That's what everybody wants to show that they're in and they got right. And that process of shedding things in order to reconfigure a portfolio is ugly. Like, in, like as it's happening, it's gross. So these things, in, in many cases, are all one trade. We talk about leverage. Bitcoin is acting just like the ARC names. The ARC names are acting just like small cap growth. They all look terrible. And they do have these violent one or two day rallies. And they resolve to the downside because there's still more people who need to shed more of that stuff to feel better. So I don't know what decouples that and what makes that uh, a thing of the past. But that is very much the way things are in the present. Everybody I talk to seems to understand that that's what's going on. And it could get worse, which is why I was talking about in the last segment. Uh, I think we, we have more work to do. There's, there's more uh, puking that has to take place in a lot of areas of this market. It's not over.